In the modern age, journalism is held as something more than a profession. It is an ideal, an ethic. It's not just a job, it's a dedication to act, to reveal information that is obfuscated. But how did this come to be? Who was it that began this crusade for the truth? The story begins in 1864 with a woman named Elizabeth Jane Cochran, known to the world as Nellie Bly. Elizabeth Cochran, the woman who would be Nellie Bly, was born May 6, 1864 in Cochran's Mill, Pennsylvania. Even at a young age, Elizabeth was considered the most independent of her 14 siblings. Her life changed course when her father died, leaving the family financially unstable. Elizabeth's mother was forced to remarry and fell into an abusive relationship. While still a teenager, she testified fiercely on her mother's behalf during her divorce trial, openly expressing that her stepfather was very cross when drunk and cross when sober. Soon after, Elizabeth was sent to school to become a teacher, one of the only vocations available to women at the time. She was lackluster in school, but proved to be a gifted writer. Moving to Philadelphia at age 16, she began to pursue a career as a writer, something unheard of for women. She nonetheless proceeded. In 1885, the Pittsburgh Dispatch published an editorial arguing that the role of a woman should be confined to the home. Elizabeth was infuriated and wrote an anonymous response, which soon drew attention to her. George Madden, the Dispatch's editor, was so impressed by the letter that he requested contact from the writer. When Elizabeth came to meet Madden, he was struck by her personality, her willpower, and determination. It was this that prompted Madden to offer Elizabeth a journalistic assignment. At her insistence, the article was written on ordinary people. Madden was impressed by her first submission and offered her more work. She wrote anonymously for a time, but soon after adopted the pseudonym that would define her, Nellie Bly. Bly's first forays into journalism saw her adopting a trademark style, covering social issues prevalent in the era. Articles on divorce led to exposés on abhorrent workplace conditions. She wished to cover as much as possible and adopted a new, extreme journalistic practice, undercover investigation. She absorbed as much information about her subjects as possible, not just theorizing what life was like, but actually experiencing it. For a time, her work did inspire changes. Public pressure stirred up by Bly forced large corporations to reform. Soon, however, they began to fight back, pulling advertising from the dispatch. The paper's editors bowed to the pressure, yanking Bly from investigative work and relegating her to the society page. Unwilling to be silenced, Bly traveled to Mexico, using her charisma to persuade her superiors to make her a foreign correspondent at just 21 years old. Upon returning, she left for New York. There, petitioned various newspapers for jobs. It wasn't until she came to the New York world and met editor John Cockrell and publisher Joseph Pulitzer that Bly's career was restarted. They liked her work, but felt that they needed something new and radical. Bly introduced them to her style of journalism and pitched the article that would make her famous, an investigation of the Blackwell's Island Lunatic Asylum. During the Blackwell's Island investigation, Bly took her techniques to an entirely new level. She posed as an insane woman and allowed herself to be interned in the asylum for 10 days. Bly presented herself to authorities as a mentally broken madwoman. Her performance was flawless, managing to fool even major newspapers. Bly was soon sent to the asylum and was horrified by what she saw. Inmates forced into cramped cells infested with rats, guards denying water and food, and physical abuse by doctors. Having gathered her evidence, Bly arranged for her release and wrote an impassioned series of articles on the asylum. The series was a hit, with reform soon being enacted on asylums across the state. Bly's career reached new heights with the article, sufficiently impressing Pulitzer and Cockrell. She became a regular for the world. Her rise to fame was just beginning. In 1889, Bly decided it was time to perform another stunt, one that would make her an icon. Inspired by Jules Verne's Around the World in 80 Days, Bly undertook the very same journey. Pulitzer, despite his interest, was wary of sending Bly. He declared that being a woman, she could not make the journey on her own and instead chose to send a man. Bly was incredulous, saying, start the man and I'll start the same day for some other newspaper and beat him. Finally relenting, Pulitzer agreed to allow her voyage. Bly departed on November 14, 1889. The journey would be difficult. Women were the target of great scrutiny internationally. She, however, was ready to meet the challenge. Beside the world's resources, she had accumulated a celebrity status, and when that failed her, her persistence opened numerous doors. Her journey included stops in London, Hong Kong, and Sri Lanka. During a layer in Chicago, she became the first woman ever to enter the Chicago Press Club. On January 25, 1890, she pulled into New Jersey, finally completing her journey. The evidence of her status materialized in the form of roaring crowds. Bly completed the journey in 72 days, eight days shorter than in Verne's novel. Upon her return, she was hailed as a national hero, becoming ingrained in popular culture. The published collection of her articles, Around the World in 72 Days, was a bestseller.
She quickly returned to work at the world, continuing to expose the city's ills. However, it was soon clear that something had changed, all because of Bly. In the early 1890s, numerous investigative reporters operating in Bly's style began to emerge. All aspired to be her, imitating her undercover investigations and social activism. Without even intending to, she'd become an inspiration, the leader of a movement that was sweeping the country. She died on January 2nd, 1922. Despite a relatively obscure death, Bly had been able to instill massive changes, revolutionizing her field like few others before her and pioneering techniques that would become intrinsic to journalism. It's difficult to understand just how massive Nellie Bly's impact was without understanding just how unique she was. Although there had been political focus present in newspapers throughout the 19th century, Bly brought journalism to a new level of involvement. There had been little social awareness until she came on the scene, and she made common people relevant in the press. Undercover journalism and stunt journalism were novel concepts. This is what enabled her to employ them so effectively. The techniques were unprecedented. Nobody expected the newest worker in a hazardous factory or the newest inmate in a destitute insane asylum to be a reporter, and Bly's work was much more authentic as a result. The reactions surrounding her stunt at the Blackwell's Island Asylum attest to this fact. There was no reason to suspect or investigate the mysterious insane woman that had suddenly appeared in New York City because Bly's work was without precedent. Before Bly, there had been few reporters, if any, who had become so successful or noteworthy with investigative journalism. When her stories were published, they drew the eye. The stunts that made Bly famous, the Blackwell's Island Report and the 72-Day Journey, were noteworthy, even bizarre, and they provided her the opportunity to broadcast stories of great social relevance to the widest audience possible. This social relevance was another hallmark of Bly. While there were others who advocated a greater social involvement in journalism, none had the effect that she did. Nearly every article she wrote made some social change, be it small, drawing interest, or large, encouraging great reform. She defined journalism for a new generation of reporters, and this made these changes permanent fixtures. This is evident in the wave of reporters who sprung up around her. From Nell Nelson to S.J. Stevenson, they were many, and they all wanted to emulate Bly. Her following established the foundations for a major shift in journalism, a movement towards investigative journalism as a proven method, and a trend of social activism in stories. These persisted into the 20th century, with many going in disguise to uncover the oppression imposed by organized crime and the government. What's remarkable about Bly is the fact that she was able to have such a massive change even in spite of the harsh world that surrounded her. She was tenacious and idealistic, never willing to give up easily. It was her own passion that led her to fight against major institutions when nobody else would. Her own desire for justice that drove her to commit herself to an asylum. Her own tenacity that allowed her to travel the world, and her own strength of character that imprinted her in the minds of reporters. She led everyone around her, from her readers to her superiors to aspiring writers. Without intending to, she started a movement that rocked journalism to its core. It's entirely possible that without Nellie Bly, journalism would be wholly different today.